Hi everyone, I thought it would be fun today to do a page from Matchstick Mouse, a floral colouring book. Um, I'm wanting to finish this book um, when I have it in my goals for this year, but I've just recently found out that De um, Morgan O'Brien is bringing out a new Matchstick Mouse book. These are the pencils I'm going to be using today. Um, and so I really want to finish this one before the new one comes out. So that's made me sort of get a bit of a spurt on really and um, it's, they are so gorgeous the pictures but I thought that I would do a page with you because otherwise I might just get on so quickly I might forget to actually share one because um, <laughs> cause I'm sort of romping through it. I'm going to do the tulips in a magenta to start with. I'm going to use a mix of pinks but... Um, I'm going to use this darker magenta to start with in the areas where I think it would be darker and then put some other pinks with it because we've got a few in this set. I've only got the um, 24 um, Chroma Flows. I know some people have a bigger set these days. I think there's... is it a... 72? 48? I'm not sure. So I'm trying to make some colour on here, but I'm thinking where they're overlapping here, it'd be a little bit darker. And this sort of underneath one would be darker than the one that's on the top. But up here, these ones I think would be a bit darker, be some shadow in there make them a little darker and this one like that and we'll do the same thing on the other two and then we'll use our next pink hopefully it'll work <laughs> hang on I'm just going to move my tins away because they're getting in the way of my hand there we are let's get you central there are some really lovely pictures in this book I think anyone who enjoys colouring florals will have fun with it. Um, and I have done a flip through, um, and I'm not sure which picture I coloured, but uh, that's fun. I've done a, I've done another tutorial, more autumnal palette, I think, as well. But uh, I think everyone's uh, got rather enchanted by Matchstick Mouse. I mean, the pictures aren't photorealistic, but I have seen some coloured in such an um, absolutely amazing way. And um, if you go onto Instagram, if you do Instagram, I know not everyone does, and look at, I think it's Cat and Mouse is the person, or is it Cat and Paste? I can't, I can't oh. Beautiful pictures of from Matchstick Mouse. Each piece of fur drawn individually. Oh, just really lovely um, colour palette. And they tend to do a lot of orange and green together. It just looks really nice. And, the sh and they tend to do um, the border as well. And um, do they do a sort of crosshatch for the, some of the shading. And it's not something that I've ever been attracted to do. I think it looks a bit but wow <laughs> it is amazing so uh, it's one word to look out for but I think uh, Morgan O'Brien has been re-posting some of their um, pictures of his because they're just so wow there we go so that's our sort of first layer then we're going to take whoops my pencil's going to run away with me the blush pink which is my next sort of lightest pink, and go over the top. Now I still want to make it look darker and lighter in different places, as I have sort of already marked out, but um, just to have more intensive colour. So I'm still leaving some lighter areas.
I think this is a prettier colour, so I think it makes it look a bit nicer. I have got a third one colour, which is why I'm not doing all of it yet. And there we go. I hope you're all doing really well. I was watching some videos this morning actually, it was quite fun, and someone said, there's a comment of someone who was made colouring videos and she said, I don't like when people colour in chat, it gets on my nerves, so I've just put music on the back of mine. <laughs> and I thought that's absolutely fair, but you know what, I don't like it when people put music on their videos and gets on my nerves. <laughs> So I don't put music on mine, but um, I think with a colour and chat, you can mute it and put your own music on if you want to. Whereas if there's music on there and not, and you don't like it, you mute it. You've got silence. You can still put on your own music, I guess. But uh, I've always felt like I wanted to explain to you what I was doing, you know, to make it more of a rather than just a chat that you know, you get some sort of tips and instruction, at least know what colours I'm using, which of course they put on the screen, so you did know. But no, they didn't actually. They said, let me know in the comments if you want to know what colours I use. That's right. So they didn't. But uh, it just depends. We're all so different in what we like and dislike. And I'm sure people who don't like to hear me chat don't <laughs> watch my videos. <laughs> and that's absolutely fair. So it's very dark and rainy today, so I hope this isn't too dark for you, but I'm sure um, it's okay. Um, it's, uh, I usually wait for it to get light before I start filming so that it's not too murky, but I waited for my husband to leave for work and he leaves after nine o'clock and it's still, still murky. So I thought, like, oh, I'm just gonna go for it. We have this very light salmon color which I'm just going to use to just do some of the lighter areas a little bit. Though it's not that light, I'm just going to just going to randomly put it in, sort of use it to blend up the colours and just fill in some of the gaps. I still want it fairly pale there, I don't want loads, but uh, just fill those tips in with a little bit of colour. Then we'll be nearly done with the flowers. Now, of course, you could do them all different colours. You don't have to just do them all the same colour. I just think, like, this is a bunch of flowers, I think, from the picture. Because I think we've got some paper wrapping them up down here at the bottom. So if I was buying a bunch of tulips, I would expect them to all be the same colour. Normally they are. But they don't have to be. I guess either that or completely multicoloured. You wouldn't have, like two colours. That's interesting. Right. Now I'm going to do the um, greenery. Um, I have got three greens. Gosh, it's quite dark. You can't really see. got like an olive green, a mid green and a dark green. I'm going to use the dark basil and the grass green. I don't think the olive green is quite going to work. So I'm going to use this at the bottom. So here's our first stem. Well, this is actually a leaf, isn't it? Now, tulip leaves tend to be fairly dark, I think. So I'm just going to fade it towards the tip by doing less layers like that. Now, I'm not really sure what... I think this is the stem here. So I'm going to colour it slightly differently so that it's looks more rounded like that. I'm going to do the same with this one which is the stem here my stomach's gurgling <laughs> and this stem here so going for whoops going from the outside in with a pale bit in the middle makes it look more rounded rather than flat. The leaves will be flatter. So we've got more leaves here. So with these it's darker at the bottom and lighter to the tip. Try and make this 
a bit dark so it's good can't speak so it looks like it's behind the stem and then these bits can be a bit paler still want to go darker at the base and paler to the tip Just checking my um my calendar because I know the boys have got haircuts coming up not this weekend the following weekend yeah. They haven't got quite such a busy, well, I don't know yet, I suppose. I was thinking I haven't got so much work this weekend, but it's a bit early days. It's only Tuesday, we won't know yet. But uh, they seem to be fairly up to date at the moment with what they're doing. So I hope so. So it's hard to know what to do there. I guess it's just mouse. Um, here is a leaf. I like Morgan O'Brien's loose style of drawing. You know, just got a few lines and there you go. But it's really easy to see. Occasionally when it's a more detailed picture I struggle to know exactly what's where. But normally it's fine. Now, do we do those bits as greenery? I think we do. I think it's going to work better. So make them a bit darker like I did on the other side so the stems show up. There we go, that's our first green. And then we're going to use the grass green. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to do the same again. So put more layers at the bottom and less as we go up. But I want to cover the whole thing because I don't think the colours will... I think it'll look old, I'll show you. So leave that there and just colour that in with that. I think it looks a bit odd. If I colour this in as well. I think it works. It's up to you, of course. I'm not going to put very much on there because those are supposed to be sort of sitting back and looking like they're sitting back a bit, so we don't want much on those. Just happily cut our way. I'm trying to think about what colour to do um, the paper and hat. And I'm thinking, and the mouse. Magic mouse herself. I've got a few plans, so we'll see. There we go. The paper, I think I'm going to do in purple. We've got two purples in this set. One's a bit shorter than the other. This one keeps breaking all the time, there's a violet. And I'm going to try and sharpen it, but if it breaks, I'm just going to use a lilac. Well, I think we've got an end to it, so violet. I'm going to use it for the sort of oops, inside of the paper because it's a bit of a. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm going to give up with that one. Let's use the lilac. I wonder if anyone else has had that problem with their um, with their chroma flows. So I'm pressing quite hard for this one because it's um, supposed to be darker. That's why I've got all those sort of lines drawn on it. And in there, look. And then this bit I think will be a bit lighter. So I'm going to do quite a light. If you hold your pencil on its side, put your hand a bit further down, you can get a much lighter layer of colour, which really helps. Do the same on here. I hope you can see you can. And then think about where I might just layer up a little bit. So I'm thinking I might just layer it up a little bit on the edge, but actually where that overlaps, there might be a bit of shadow coming down there. Maybe in here a bit. I'm trying to make it look smooth, as smooth as I can. And look, we've got some shadow drawn there. Just do a little bit on the edge as well. Mm, I feel this bit's a little bit too pale. We'll just do a little bit at the bottom.
there we go. Okay, we've got a sort of background behind mouse around here. Um, I'm thinking maybe a blue, but are we going to do mouse's hat blue? Yes, that's okay. Right, we'll use the light blue for the background. I don't know if you can see very well. And we'll just fill in these little gaps. I think it fits with our palette well, rather than doing mm, orange, yellow, red, I'm going to avoid with this. I've gone back, having used, um, I've got the um, colour cube, I'm trying to expand my mind with regards to colour choices, and yet I've gone back to a pink, purple, blue palette, which I use lots. <laughs> hey. We'll get there. I've had a lot of fun, I have to say. I will show you um, what my plan is on my completed pages is to dig out the cards that I've used for certain pages because I've noted down which pages I've used cards for and which cards I've used. And um, um, show you what I've been doing. This is the denim. I'm going to use it for the hat. For her hat, I should say. So I'm just going to put a layer all over and then think about where I might want to darken it up. I don't have another dark blue, so this is my darkest blue. So I need to be careful because I don't want the whole hat to be dark. So I need to just take it carefully. And then I can choose where to put a darker colour in a bit. So I'm just trying to get a fairly even layer. It's not that easy, so don't worry if you're struggling a little bit. It just comes with practice. So I'm thinking this bit might be darker around the edge of here. And then a little bit lighter in the middle. That's it. And then down here. And up. And a bit of shadow on this side too. You can keep playing around with this as long as you like. I think I'll put a bit up here as well. I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't want it to be too dark. Now, her self. Um, I think I'm going to do her in grey. I don't want to do her in browns because it's. I think grey goes much nicer with this sort of cold colour palette. This is called Platinum. It's the only grey I've got and it's quite pale. I'm going to use it for on all of her and then I'm going to have to use my black to uh, make her darker in some places. Because I always colour her so that she's got a lighter, lighter and darker areas of fur as um as she is depicted on the cover with a lighter area here and this darker fur here but obviously I'm not using those browns. Morgan O'Brien I notice always colours her the same colour but uh, I think always with an orange hat as well but I like to mix it up a bit. And uh, it's up to you if you do that. Some people like to colour consistently through the book and other people don't mind. I like to mix it up because it just makes it more interesting for me. Also, I use different pencil sets. They have different colours in. Right, I'm going to grab a pink. The salmon to do her ears, the inside of her ear here. Now, I don't know whether that is the inside or the outside. I think it probably the outside. Sting her little fingers. She's only got and her nose. Some people like to do her nose black. I vary it. There. Do that ear. I can't remember if I've done it. It's so faint this some colour. So now I'm going to use my black to finish her off. 
Now I don't want to use lots and lots and lots of black, but I'm going to do some fur. So if I do some strokes of black, it won't be quite so hard and dark, but it will at least show that this bit is supposed to be a bit more furry which obviously is what's been indicated by the way she's been drawn anyway. And it's quite fun drawing little bits of fur, I find. Mm, I think that bit isn't quite so furry. I'm just going to put a tiny bit there to sort of form some shadow under the chin. It's a bit dark. I'm going to get the grey, the platinum, and just put over it to try and fade it down a little bit. There we go. Now some people use glossy accents on her eyes to make them shiny, which I think is an interesting idea. I don't have any. But um, I don't mind. I think it looks okay without, but it's just a little idea. Um, if you want one to try something different. But there we are. It's quite a simple picture, which is why I chose it. I thought it would be a nice and easy one to do with you. But, uh, but I had fun. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was um, okay. I hope you have a really lovely day. And happy covering.